morning, uh, Barry. Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? Doing very good. Uh, we have Supervisor Shirley and myself here. So, um, with that, um, go ahead and uh, start the Board of Supervisors meeting. Let's see, I have um, eight. 34. Is that what you have, Beth? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, with that, um, anyone, anybody want to do an invocation from the audience? No one? Then okay. Mrs. Weller. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the uh, Board of Supervisors or is this the, uh, we don't have health or jail district? Okay, good enough. Um, item one, which, who's going to take that? We have, a, is this a presentation, Mr. Winger? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is a presentation by uh, Brad Traver of the Petrified Forest, and he's here with us today. Okay, good morning, Brad. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity to bring, bring you an update of what's going on at the Five Forest National Park. Uh, Mr. Uh, you might want to pick that up so Barry can hear you on the phone. Just take it off and stand there. And pull it there you go. Is that better? Yeah, it should be. All right. Um, I wanted to bring you up to date on some things that are going on at the Five Forest, and I've got a presentation that will only be a few minutes. Um, What's represented on the screen here is the, the park, uh, the, the green outline is the park as it was in 2004, and the dark outline beyond that is the Expansion Act authorized lands uh, from 2004, Petrified Forest Expansion Act. Um, this is what the uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Weller. Yeah, uh, it's almost there if uh, the gentleman would hold the microphone a little closer and then there's some people wrestling papers in front of a microphone that are making it very difficult. Okay. The slide that's in front of us now is shows the land ownership map for Petrified Forest where uh, some of the lands that were authorized have been acquired. And uh, so... 13,210 acres of that is contiguous to the existing park road and accessible off that park road. There's another 1,440 acres that are up here in the north of the freeway, but but uh, in the northwest or southwest corner of the portion of the park up there, that's 1,440 acres uh, that has also been added. And then there's over 41,000 acres on that east side that's checkerboarded with state trust lands. That's the majority of those, those squares you see on the east side are checkerboarded with state. And then a few, a few sections over in the west side that are inaccessible because of uh, private ownership around them still. So those are, those are not to be open. But I want to talk a little bit about our plans to open some of those lands. Uh, first off, the lands that are, that are adjacent to the existing park road, some of these in the middle of the park that uh, the... Uh, a little hard to, to show the, uh, the pointer on there, but the ones that are in the middle of the park that uh, kind of expand east and west, there's 14,650 acres in there that we have opened this month to the public uh, for 
it's it's backcountry use. It's not uh, there's no roads or anything out there, but people can walk out to some of the attractions. And some of those attractions are are these. There's a, a place called Red Basin, which is kind of interesting geologically. There's some additional petrified wood, as you would expect. Uh, this is a, a 220 million year old clam bed. So it was uh, on the bottom of the river 220 million years ago, and now there are clams embedded in the rocks, as you can see in that image. So that's uh, that's one of the main attractions in the in these new lands that are now open this this month. Uh, the next area I want to talk about is the area in blue in this slide. It's an area that's also been opened. This this time it's opened by a permit, free permit uh, that can be obtained at the visitor center. Uh, it is an area that provides a new access to the wilderness of the park. There's 43,000 acres of wilderness in the northern part of the park, and this is a secondary access or second access to that wilderness. It goes through a, this road that's highlighted on this map, which is in Navajo County. The county is working with us to create a legal access uh, or easement across that land to provide uh, legal access into those new park lands. Uh, this is a a map of a, a hiking trail that leads from the end of the road into the wilderness. And uh, we've had uh, the first few permits issued this month. There are only four per month to, to try and um, alleviate some concerns that our neighbors had over the opening of this area to the public. So we're, we're opening it slowly. Uh, so there were four permits a month, and the first two were issued last weekend. This is what that area looks like. Geologically interesting, it's called the Three Witches. Uh, additional things that are going on, this is uh, our, our field season. We always have summer, summer science going on. This is our paleontology crew from last summer. They were able to get onto the new lands that we've recently acquired. And this particular site is interesting because it is a, it appears to be the bottom of a pond from 200 million years ago where most of the sites that we have in the park are, are the bottom of a river. Uh, this means that there are smaller bones, there's a different ecology, and we can learn more about the uh, ecology of that time from this site. So that's, that's an exciting find for us. And we also found uh, additional uh, fossil remains of phytosaurs. This is a, a, an ancestor of crocodiles, and this is uh, the, the skull being worked on in the lab. There's also work on, paleo on uh, archaeology last summer. This is, uh, represents seven axe heads that were found in a single cache at one of the sites that we uh, explored last summer. Uh, we, we are trying to, to do a scientific survey of the, of the lands that we've recently acquired, and this is one of the finds that was made last summer on those lands with that survey. And there'll be more work this summer and next summer as well. And this is our crew out in the field doing their archaeological work. Uh, this is one of the sites that they found. They're, some of the sites are from the pre-Pueblo period, meaning the, uh, most of the, the, the basket maker period was before there was pottery. So this, these are fairly old. They're from you know, 1,500 to 2,000 years ago. We're also making some visitor improvements. This is at our visitor center. We've, we're uh, going to try to do a better job of introducing the park to visitors who come off of I-40 and haven't decided yet whether they want to come into the park or not. And this, will, this is an opportunity to, uh, to interest them in the, the stories that the park has to tell. We're adding a trail from the visitor center up to the Painted Desert Rim so people can walk from the, from the headquarters up to the rim if they choose to. Right now it's, uh, you have to pay your entrance fee to go up there and this would uh, be a free trip. And we have added this page to our website, which is some off-the-beaten-path trips, places that are, have been open for a long time for, uh, for anyone to go to, but people don't know that there are interesting things to see out there, so we're highlighting some of the interesting things to see and how to get there. And with this list of, of opportunities will continue to grow over time. And the last slide, uh, this is our visitation uh, figures or graph, uh, the, last, the last dot being a down dot, but the only reason it was down is because the government shut down last fall in October and the fact that the bridge across the interstate 
uh, was closed in November, December. So we, uh, we lost